so I don't know why we are all so fucking fixated on doing something quick and it's just nothing sustainable works that way we have to think long term step by step about how to get somewhere we can't just get there tomorrow it's not going to happen for your body to change because you are sculpting something sculptors take their time baby they don't rush <laughs> I'm gonna go turn the heater off so that y'all can't hear it. <laughs> Hi there. I'm waiting for my fucking heater to go off. <laughs> Hi there. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Quinn and I create lifestyle content. Today I'm going to tell y'all about how I've lost about 60 pounds in the last three years. I have been trying to lose weight my entire life. I was diagnosed with PCOS when I was in high school and it wasn't until this year really that I started to see the most progress in my body recomposition journey and I am so proud of what I've done so far and I just really wanted to share with y'all what has worked for me, what changes I made and what I plan to do to keep going. So if you're into that stick around if you want to see more fitness content of mine I share my workouts and things on my Instagram and on my TikTok yeah let's get into it I'm gonna speak in sections so that I can easily cut this video into parts so if you want to skip around to wherever you're most interested you can do that how I lost 50 plus pounds my body recomposition journey so far with PCOS I'm 26 years old right now. It's December 2022. If you see me looking down, it's because I have my tablet right here with my very extensive notes because that's what I do. I'm from Jackson, Mississippi. I grew up in the deep south, so I did not have like the best diet as far as uh, balance, I mean, you know, the food was bomb as fuck and it being bomb as fuck is quite important to my palate and all those things. But as far as nutrition, I ate snacks and sugar far too much because of my extreme, extreme sweet tooth. So I was always bigger and I often was bullied for that. When I was younger, I initially started out being into cheer and dance and ballet, but then I was bullied out of it because of, I have surgery marks on my stomach. Born with it, I was born, had to have surgery, saved my life, all that good jazz. And, but they called me three stomachs. I'm, and I, that's, that started my whole, let's lose weight forever journey. And honestly y'all, it, it really contributed to some low confidence for quite a long time. And that low confidence resulted in a lot of poor behavior on my behalf to me. I was definitely still loving myself. I've definitely always been a take pictures, show myself, go out, bubbly person. Like that has never changed no matter what I look like. Like I ain't trying to be one of those, I was so sad before and now I'm happy. Like it's not like that. Uh, I will say though, as far as confidence specifically, I wanted to start this YouTube channel two years ago, but I was not confident enough in my body. I had the camera, I had most of the things, but I did not have the confidence to just put myself out there. I was so used to being hidden, and I spent so much of my undergraduate education hidden. I really have been intentional since moving out to grad school back in 2019 to come out of my shell, and I've slowly, as I've gone through my fitness journey, uh, come out of that shell even more with my confidence and that's the relationship I want to focus on today. I really saw the most change once I moved here. So I want to start there as my where I started for section two. So section two where I started. In 2019 I was 220 pounds. This was my freshman year of grad school and my activity level was really sporadic honestly. I had been trying to lose weight forever, so I, you know, I got the jazz of working out and not eating. I, I thought that's all it was. Like, don't eat a lot, keep working out. Nothing, nothing beyond that. No structure, no like real <laughs> understanding of what, how to, how to tailor that to my actual goals. So I would always walk around campus to get my steps in, and I would sporadically work out when I, you know, saw something on Pinterest or I felt sparked. So I've also always been a dancer, so I might do some Zumba or something like that. And so that was my fitness level back in 2019. And my food habits were honestly pretty poor. I it was my first year moving to grad school, so I couldn't afford a lot of stuff. So I was buying what I could afford. So noodles and chip and dip and fast food and quick meals. And it was not leading to the best health. <laughs> and But it was kind of just like what I had to do, but I was still trying to be within the parameters of my goal, even though I did not yet really understand that. 
And that's where I want to get into my mindset thing. So where I started my mindset was definitely in a, I need to be skinny place. Like not a, I want to grow this thing. I want to do that thing. It was just an, uh, I'm too big. Like that's all I thought about myself. So it was very number focused. It was like, I have to get to this weight. I have to, you know, lose it by this time. I would always set a event that I needed to lose weight by like, oh, I'm going home. I need to lose weight by this day. And, oh, well, if I can't, I need, I'm going on a trip. So I need to lose weight by that. <clears throat> oh, I should lose weight by, you know what I'm saying? It was always number focused. And I was definitely a cardio bunny, like lifting weights. What was that girl? And that was my thing. So I walk a lot. And then also as far as mindset, I was very much so of the understanding of the, I thought it was as simple as calories in, calories out. Which it is not. <laughs> it's so much more complex than that and very personal. But I just had that as my mindset, just calories in, just calories out. So I burn a lot of calories, do cardio, don't eat a lot. So I was under eating. I was definitely not eating enough to make any change in my muscle mass or anything like that. It was just very quick fix minded. And that was why I hadn't been seeing any results for most of my life because that's been my mindset for most of my life. I was just trying to be skinny. I wasn't really trying to change my body or do things for myself. It was just all aesthetically focused. And I, there was just a lot of, I was, I always needed to do it quick and I wasn't willing to keep working when I wasn't seeing it working, you know? So that's where I started. Next section, where I am. It's currently 2022. I'm currently in my last year of grad school. My current activity level, I lift three to five times a week, three days of the week I do legs, two days of the week of the week I do arms and abs, and I walk as well three to five times a week. Uh, the walking three to five times a week, like every day that you lift, you should also do some form of cardio. So it doesn't have to be walking, uh, it could be all kinds of things, but that's what I, I try to do every day because I love walking and it's a steady state cardio exercise, which is important for people with PCOS so that you're not spiking your heart rate and your blood sugar and all of those things, which you, you, you wanna keep most things at a steady state. So yeah, lifting three to five times a week, walking three to five times a week, and also trying to maintain like 5K plus steps. So my cardio is separate from that goal. So if I don't get any cardio in, I still wanna get 5K plus steps. Back to my current activity level, my current food habits, I eat very protein based. I, when I'm picking out my meals, I immediately think how much protein is in this? How, are there any vegetables in this meal? Is there any cheese? And that's my approach towards meals. And does it taste good? Like that's just what I think about. I feel like I eat way more balanced. I try to make sure that I have some of every food group on my plate, some of every macro on my plate. That's just how I view food now. Um, and I base it upon what I like. So I have a list of things in each food group that I like and I choose one of that and that is how I eat. That list of things also includes restaurants and places that aren't my home. I can get meat and carbs and vegetables at any place, at any restaurant. And it can be a salad, it could be a nacho bowl. That's carving meat and you know what I'm saying? I care about macros. This is right here on my desk area where I have my favorite things to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner that meet my goals. And I try to make sure I have all the things I need for that in my house. And then I also have extras. Like if I want to make a certain dinner that week or I want to make some desserts, I'll also buy those things. But I always keep some staple meal stuff in my house so that I can always have my goals met. And then my mindset now is no longer about like skinniness and cardio and all that stuff. I want to be strong and I want my heart to be strong and I want all of my muscles to be strong and I want to be hot. I want to have the confidence that I've been lacking for so fucking long. Um, and then when I think about my goals then, instead of being skinny, I have silhouette goals. Uh, when I think of doing a body recomposition journey, it's literally, reshaping your body, sculpting, sculpting your body, you're re-sculpting it like it's going one way and you're reshaping it through technique with exercise and food and nutrition. And so I'm very silhouette focused. I'm Everything I do is with a certain body shape change in mind. Like each exercise is a chisel and that's why I choose those exercises and why I do those things. Um, I also definitely prioritize eating because I understand better now just how necessary the nutrition is for the scoping part. Also understand 
that I need to sleep. As a person with PCOS, sleep affects so much of your hormone levels as far as it triggering you to eat carbs, how well you're rested and your energy levels are the next day and determining your mood and it's just like, you don't, you're not sleeping enough, you're not gonna do anything else enough. And then I also think way more long term instead of having like, by this date I need to, I'm like, I wanna look hot forever. Why is there a certain date I have to meet? Like I wanna look hot this Christmas. I wanna look hot next Christmas. I wanna look hot that Christmas. There is no stopping point. Like I wanna look hot always. So like there isn't a date to meet it by. That's my approach now. Timeline. I'm gonna put this on the screen. So in 2019, my activity level was basically just walking. I walked a lot and that kind of got me started with everything when I first got here. So then from 2019, as far as food, um, I went from eating like whatever food I could afford, which was cheap food, honestly, pretty bread heavy. I ate, I love a good Nor rice pack, okay? And I will eat that as a meal. Like I will eat that whole bag, that's four servings in one sitting. Um, and also in 2020, uh, same thing walking and then I also incorporated yoga. I had started to get into yoga classes at my school. They were offered for free at VCU as a grad student through all of that jazz and I was really enjoying those classes so I started doing it enough that I started doing it at home and now I love it. But so then my activity level in 2020 was walking and yoga. In 2020, I tried to cook more. I had I started making Pinterest boards with healthy heart ideas and meal prepping and figuring out what things I should prioritize as far as eating. When I started looking into trainers and everything, I realized that I should be eating way more specifically. My mindset helped went, go, went from just wanting to lose weight to honestly, um, in 2020, I my mindset changed because I got tired of hiding. <laughs> you know, I was starting to see changes from the walking and the yoga, and I looked into how do I see more change. I was tired of hiding, and I was seeing the changes in the things I wanted to see changes in, so I was like, what do I need to do to get for real about this shit? And that's where my mind went. So then in 2021, I moved into a studio by myself. I had roommates up until this point, and I was doing my walking still, but I uh, bought a training program from Nissa Fit. I used to follow her on Instagram, loved her program. And in 2021, because I moved into a studio, I was honestly doing less cooking. Uh, so my nutrition wasn't really on point, but I was still eating mindfully. Like I said before, you can get any macros on any plate that of where you are. So as long as I had those things on my plate, I tried to eat that way, but I didn't really cook so much. I had a super, super small kitchen, but I was still eating mindfully because I had learned about I needed to be more specific about what I was eating. And I actually, you know, when you sign up for a plan, you have to say like what your goals are. And I was like, oh shit, I've honestly just been trying to get skinny, but what are my goals? And I realized I wanted to grow my ass and lose weight like those are my primary goals yeah i have not had that forever people have talked about me about it forever and i finally have gotten comfortable with it but it's always been something i would like to try but at my own choice i never really wanted to try before because people would always force the idea onto me like you know if you did these things it would grow and i would be like thank you like thank you for telling me i need to change and that was also a, a reason why i was so hesitant to commit to it because it was just like why are you making me feel like i have to do this like i only like doing things i want to do that's a big proponent of my personality so it was like no i'm not going to do anything to grow my ass Fuck you but i was very insecure about it still <laughs> so i said in the in the training plan i was like yeah i i want to do targeted workouts towards my ass and so she made a plan for me that was targeted towards that and i was seeing progress with that i was like oh my god i would walk past the street and be like oh shit that's not flat like this is working so then i was like okay i need to figure out how to do this and i learned about body recomposition and so body recomposition became my goal and i got even more systemic with the way i approached losing weight and so now here we are in 2020 at the end of 2021 i went through a breakup and that really motivated me to get super consistent and focused on myself so i bought booty king at booty king's uh home program and i was just like i want to try to see what happens if i'm consistent with somebody's plan like i know that plans work i know that targeted to work out to what i need to do i understand doing cardio every day like i know all the things i need to do so let me just get on it you know what i'm saying like let me be consistent so i was doing his workout plan and i was walking and for february through march i would just try to do his workouts 
and my approach was every time I missed a day of the week, I would start over. So if I, I wanted to do four weeks in a row before I went to the next four weeks because of how the plan changes. And if I only did three out of five days in a week, then I didn't do the first week. So that I would, you know, be consistent with it. And every time, the, the longer that I was consistent, the better the results were and it motivated me more to be even more consistent. Like, okay, so doing it for two weeks in a row definitely does more than just doing it for a week in a row. Okay, bet, you know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, shit. Like, I, I started to see progress faster and this is also when I started because I was being more systemic and targeted with it I was cooking my own meals I've been way more protein focused I have my staple meals I understand my deficit I eat way more intuitively based on listening to my my body I started taking protein powder to make sure I was getting enough protein I started taking creatine because I know that that helps with muscle mass along with making sure I was really serious about meeting those macro goals so that's what I've been doing in 2022. My mindset has been, is now about progress. I now understand progress a lot better. I understand how none of this is quick. <laughs> like no, no sustainable change in our world is quick. Every single quick uh, plan that has been implemented in our government, in our schools, in anywhere has fallen short somehow. So I don't know why we are all so fucking fixated on doing something quick. It's just nothing sustainable works that way. We have to think long term step by step about how to get somewhere. We can't just get there tomorrow. It's not going to happen. I just have to keep going is how my mind became. And that has helped me be more consistent in anything. I've been, never been more consistent in my life with working out than right now. I've never seen more, more progress in my body yet. You see me now, girl. I also eat way more intentionally uh, with all the, the cooking and the new understanding of how the body works and all of that. And all of my workouts are planned. I'm still following uh, guided workout plans. So those are all planned. So I'm not just sporadically working out different days and I'm also not doing sporadic stuff, which is important to seeing progress. That has been the timeline from where I started to where I am. So that has been my journey. Now let's get a little general for section five. What has worked for me and why I think it worked. I see the most progress when I make sure to lift three to five times a week, do cardio at least three times a week, get a minimum of 5K steps, also get seven plus hours of sleep, eat at a maintenance amount of calories or a little below, get at least 60 ounces of water, and eat at least 80 grams of protein. When I am getting as many of these boxes as possible, I see the most progress. Here's why I think so. The uh, lifting weight three to five times a week aids in muscle growth. This is how you build your muscles, like, lifting them, lifting heavy things, stretches and strains them so that they get bigger and you then feed them with enough nutrients and cardios and macros to fill in the space that you have now created by stretching it. And then once you fill it in, you need to drink water and get sleep so that your muscles are then hydrated so that they are not stiff and rested so that they are ready to move again when you train them again and making sure you get enough protein make sure that you are fully stuffing it like eating enough food is stuffing it but the what actually goes to your muscles is the as much protein as you're eating and then as far as losing weight since it's body recomposition that's just the muscle growth part the losing weight part is doing the cardio three times a week and getting a minimum of k steps so moving as much as possible in your daily life eating that minimum k steps makes your natural energy expenditure higher so if you just if you never go on a walk but you walk a lot then that is going to help you but then if you walk a lot and you go on a 30 minute walk every day you will absolutely see a difference in your weight loss if you are also doing the things for muscle growth so if you're doing the things for muscle growth and you're doing the things for weight loss you are now recomposing your body you are sculpting your body in a new way you are shedding that while also shaping the muscles so you're able to reveal that while you do all of this at once. So yes, the lifting three to five times a week is muscle growth. The cardio is for your heart health and helps create your deficit and your calories. Um, so that's for weight loss. The minimum K steps has a higher TDEE, your daily expenditure. The seven hours of sleep and aids in muscle recovery and hormone balance and mental health. <laughs> and then eating at maintenance, make sure that you are giving your body the nutrition it needs to have all of its full faculties. Imagine that you want to eat as much 
as you can for your TDE and your goals so that you are not performing lower in any area. Making sure you have enough water helps create uh, helps creatine benefits because creatine health and bone health and everything which helps grow your muscles but it does dehydrate you so if you make sure that you are uh, hydrated it counteracts any kind of side effects you might have from taking that and also it helps in hydration and recovery we are what is 80 90 percent water or something drinking a minimum amount should always be your goal and exceeding that amount should always be your goal and then eating enough protein again is what is packing in your muscles all of these things are necessary for body recomposition and now we're going to get into the tips section so food tips and fitness tips fitness tips as far as supplements goes i think protein has made the biggest difference i feel like I see the most uh, consistent look in my silhouette when I am meeting my protein goals. So as long as those muscles are always packed in, it's always going to look nice and plumpy, nice and strong. But the less protein you get, the more, the less shape it will have. I mean, creatine has also been incredibly important to me for seeing that efficiency and being able to work out longer and harder and my bones needing less time to recover so I can lift heavier within the next session instead of like a week later, which is then the heavier you lift, the more progress you'll see because you're straining it more and building, like creating more space. You know what I'm saying? So creatine has also been important. So of course, if I'm gonna be taking creatine, I need to make sure I'm hydrating. So for me, I, that's why I take the BCAAs. I don't believe they do anything else. They're essentially like, those hydration packets that you get from the Walmart, I think that's what they are, just in powder form. So I, that's why I take the BCAAs to make sure that I'm meeting my hydration levels even if I don't get enough actual just water. So those are the supplements that I recommend. I don't use anything else. Oh, I use pre-workout when I really wanna lift heavy because I do feel the boost. And I, I use One Soul's pre-workout because it has the lowest amount of caffeine I have seen in a pre-workout product. I ain't sponsored, but you know, I don't recommend pre-workout. Like, I don't think it's necessary at all. I didn't start taking it, and so I started going to the gym. And I didn't start going to the gym this year until halfway through my journey. So I was definitely seeing progress before then, but I started seeing more progress once I started taking creatine. So my tips about frequency are, Make sure that you are doing strict training at least three to five times a week. Like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you should be lifting. And that does not mean you have to go to anybody's gym. I bought the home program my first three months and I did everything with this mat. And I have a bench that's in my room. My studio was all one room, so my bench was right here. And everything I did was right here. I can do my, you know, my hip thrust on the bench. I can do all of my ab things here. You know what I'm saying? I have weights you know what i'm saying i have a kettlebell i only have one kettlebell you know what i'm saying i have a mat i have a yoga wheel i have jump rope i have the outside i was doing it at home i was also still kind of hiding like i said so i wasn't ready to go to the gym so i was still training three to five times a week but i was doing it at home so lifting at home is entirely possible i bought booty kings straps so i could also do some of the like weighted stuff with resistance bands and I think that frequency and that consistency and frequency is incredibly important for seeing progress and also doing cardio an equal amount of times. I have varied on how consistent I am with cardio throughout the years as I have said, but I always see the most progress when I am consistently getting cardio in three to five times. I believe for body recomposition it's better to get the cardio in after you lift because if you get the cardio in first you might be really fatigued and not be as in it when you are lifting so you want to prioritize making that lifting because you can get that cardio in at any time of the day you can dance at any time of the day you ain't gotta get a walking you ain't gotta do the stairmaster first you can do that at any point you could come back and do it i feel like that's how i see it i have recreated in my mind my mental health walk so like it's for my heart health and it's for my mind like i have to go on this walk for my mental health like i have to like and it's for my heart and i'm getting like there's so many reasons why I should go walking. Like, I just, I'm gonna do it, you know? Like, that's how I see it. Uh, there are some things to think about when it comes to variation. So there are some variation you should be doing, some things you should not be varying. So you should be doing the same workouts week to week for each month. So if there is month one, month two, month three, month four, you should be doing the same workouts weeks one through four, different workouts weeks five through six, the same ones from one through four, the, different, the same ones from five through six. 
that is how I've been alternating and I feel like this is important because if you were doing something different every time, how are you training a specific area? Like if this area is trained by certain exercises but I only do it once every couple weeks because I'm not planning anything, how will it actually grow and function? How do how is it how am I gonna mark my progress and see my progress if I'm not consistently doing that workout for that area and that works for everyone on your body? So you wanna be doing that so that you are doing it long enough to see a change, a mark change and then you want to vary it so that you work the other muscles and you're also like giving those muscles some rest but not not using anything and then you go back to those and you lift even heavier on uh, every time that you vary these uh every time you like vary back and forth and sometimes that varying back and forth might doing a be different doing a different plan for me that varying back and forth was a home plan i did that for six months and then i did the gym plan and then now i'm doing someone else's plan but each time it's like, the, it, all the plans have been weeks one through four, these same workouts. Weeks five through six, these specific workouts, all right? Do that one again, do that one again, hopscotch. You know what I'm saying? Just, and then progressively overload to build, right? And so that's how you have progression. Increasing the weight over time is what is going to make the change more and more apparent. So you're doing the same things over and over, so I'm training in the same area, right? And then every time I train, I'm getting even heavier, so it's, like straining even more. So that's how you see progression over time through lifting the weight. If you never change the weight that you're doing it, then you're just, it's always going to be the same. You're just, you're maintaining, you're not growing your muscles. So you want to increase the weight over time with those same workouts. And then eventually you will figure out what works best for your body, where you see the most progress. I knew very quickly <laughs> that um, I <laughs> did not like hit stuff, like with PCOS. I also want to say that I think as far as cardio is concerned, make your cardio an activity. What has been incredibly helpful was a lot of my cardio was done with other people, so it didn't feel so cumbersome. And then I started taking jujitsu classes at one point, did yoga classes, I have hosted hiking events, I'm always taking somebody on a walk somewhere to some park. Like making my cardio an activity, and especially with others, makes me really into it and looking forward to it. And it's also just my music time. So I definitely recommend doing stuff like that so it doesn't feel like you're doing cardio. It's just like hanging out and being active and it's good for quality time and for your goals. So I definitely recommend that. And then some things I've learned for fitness tips that are specific to PCOS. I would prioritize slow weighted lifting over HIT. A lot about PCOS is a, how imbalanced your hormones are, your insulin levels, and everything in insulin levels are impacted by the macros that you are eating and your sleep and your blood pressure and your blood sugar. You want to keep those as steady as possible. When things spike, they their return rate is different in PCOS than in other non-PCOS people. So you want to do a lot of things that keep your heart and your hormones and your macros at a steady level. So slow weighted lifting, so your heart rate isn't spiking up and down too high, making in your, your body, it's hard for our bodies to regulate at the same speed as other people. So doing slow weighted lifting keeps that heart rate at a steady uh, pace and that way you're not overworking your adrenals or any or your cortisol or getting yourself too stressed out from your workout and not recovering properly because you've actually done more damage to yourself than you intended to. Similarly for cardio, I prioritize steady state cardio. So walking, yoga, Pilates, lifting, you know, dancing around my room, partying, like these are things that are steady state cardio. Whereas stuff like running and anything like quick, high paced type stuff is not good. And as far as piece, another PCOS tip, like I said before, you really wanna prioritize sleep. Sleep impacts your hormonal levels. Um, it keeps them balanced and balances your cravings and therefore you stay on your nutrition goals, which then feeds your macro and, pro and, and TDE goals, which then feeds your, you know, weight loss and muscle growth goals. So like your sleep is the first step for all of that. So you really want to keep your cortisol under control and just making sure that you can really control your stress levels. Like all of your stress hormones are so easily impacted by life and how you work out. So you want to be specific about the way you work out and be specific about the way you recover because of the way our bodies work. And also making sure that you're eating a balanced plate. Again, 
you don't want anything sparking too spiking too high when I, when I say things I'm talking about the level of protein or carbs or in your body like when you eat something you're that how much of that is in your body is increasing but you don't want too much of that spiking definitely not by itself so what makes them coming down steadily is eating them all together balanced so so if you eat them all at the same time your carbs your protein your vegetables then they're all going to come down at the same time and you're going to stay balanced and be able to be hungry again at an appropriate time Another important part about this is making sure that you are not under eating. If you're not getting enough food, then these things are definitely spiking way too inconsistently to be efficient for your goals at all. If your system is not working consistently and efficiently, then it is not going to give you the results you want to keep your hormones balanced, your microbiome balanced. So next section is food tips. I prioritize essentially the my plate example. So making sure you get enough vegetables so that you get enough fiber and nutrients, making sure you get enough protein so that you have what you need for muscle growth, making sure you get enough water so that your body is hydrated, making sure you get enough carbs so that you are full fueled to move and have energy to live and make sure you get enough dairy for prebiotic and probiotic gut health. So these are all important for different parts of your body and different parts of your system and we need all of them working together so we want to prioritize having each of those things on every plate that we eat in some kind of way right so i'm going to tell you my favorites in each section and then how i would might combine them so for vegetables my favorites are broccoli spinach string beans onion bell pepper these are some go-to's of mine that i can eat with anything my favorite protein foods so i eat meat and things so salmon I love tuna, I love chicken, I love salami and pepperoni, I love eggs, I love protein smoothies because they taste like strawberries, I love protein bars, uh, I love turkey meat, like sandwich meat, bacon and sausage. My favorite carb, oatmeal, I like my oatmeal real creamy so I eat it with like vanilla and I also love toast because bread, who doesn't love toast? You need some carbs in your life girl, what? Like you need it to be hyped up. like if you got no bread in your life that's probably why you sold jewelry anyway rice and potatoes like i said i love a good nor rice pack love a good rice pack love a good rice mix honestly i can eat chicken rice and vegetables for every meal for the rest of my life like it just works also potatoes you can eat them for breakfast you can eat them for lunch dinner like they and you can make them any kind of way baked potato fries like potatoes are the goat like come on come on come on come on come on so yes, these are my favorites for each food group. Please do not eat too many fast, especially if you have PCOS. That long gap in nutrition is horrible and is gonna cause you to binge eat and not eat as intuitively because you have been intentionally restricting yourself and ignoring your hunger cues in order to intermittent fast. I do not recommend it. I do not see, I, I, I believe that science is not backing up. I also recommend not restricting. I saw the most progress when I, I use the yes and approach and the add in approach. So what I mean by that is instead of saying, I will never eat any chips anymore. I will, I'm gonna go a whole month with no chips, no candy, no alcohol, no whatever. Like that, that never worked for me. It was always incredibly too restrictive. I would never last long. And I'd be so mad every time I didn't do all of those things. It was just a perpetual cycle of disappointing myself because who can do that? So instead of doing that, I use the yes and. So it's like, I really like chips. So I'm gonna eat these chips with a healthy sandwich. I want to eat some chocolate, so I'm going to eat my, you know, meal prep and then eat my chocolate after. The yes and approach is way less restrictive and allows you to incorporate things you like into your meals. I just find that like being able to add in what you want still to your meals keeps you from feeling like you're depriving yourself. You have to, if you eat, overeat today, you can not overeat next week and you will be fine. I also recommend find your go-to faves. Create your list of what you know you like. That way that if the going gets tough and you just get so, you know, busy and everything, I think that's the, the most common excuse, like you don't have time or whatever, because I mean, it is true. Capitalism steals all of our time from us so that we are not efficient in our relationships or in our personal lives because we are just supposed to be causing the machine. But um, as much as you can do to be efficient with your time as possible, I guess that will be as helpful as possible because 
there's only so much you can control obviously there are ways to make things work for how you're living but i do i do want to say that like <laughs> i none of this is as simple as it sounds like all of these things are a big factor in how much progress you will make and when you will make it like, this is not a self-will power thing sometimes it's you just don't have the things you need where you are and you have to do the best of what you can until you get there um but it's about doing the best you can every single day and you'll get there regardless of circumstances because you kept going those are all of the food tips i also have some mindset tips so some ways to think and approach this journey so that it is sustainable and achievable for you and how my mindset has changed and how it became for me understanding the fact that the body you're looking at right now is a product of two weeks of work and not what you're doing today like what you're doing today is not what you see on yourself. What I look like right now is a result of how much I've been working out and eating in the last two weeks. So if I have not been eating well or eating enough in the last two weeks, that is what I will look like. But I work, but if, even if I'm working out well and eating well right now, I'm not gonna see the benefits of that until at least two weeks from now. This is scientifically true. In your body, you do not see the marked changes in your hormones, levels of, of any sort, until two weeks after you make that change. It takes two weeks of consistent change before you see any marked internal changes. And then it, even after that, it takes a while to see external changes. So the body you're looking at is not yesterday's body. I hope that is a helpful understanding, but that is how I think of it. And that has really shaped me into more long-term thinking instead of short-term thinking. So you just have to keep doing that over time to see marked progress. And that is that long-term thinking is gonna be incredibly imperative for you to stay the course to meet your goals for your body to change because you are sculpting something. Sculptors take their time, baby, they don't rush. You should know that. I approach this whole thing as an artist, honestly. <laughs> like I think of it as me sculpting my body as a person. Each hip thrust is a certain brush stroke to shape my butt a certain way. Each deadlift adds another uh to my back. I'm making sure I'm doing my cardio. The more refined and toned my sculpture is gonna look, the more people will be able to see the changes I'm making from a distance. The more consistent and careful I am with each stroke, each deadlift, each hip thrust, the more intentional I am about that the, and how consistent I am with that will determine what my sculpture looks like. And I am my sculpture. I am creating this, so it's fully up to me how it's going to look. How consistent am I gonna be with that stroke? Am I gonna practice that all the time or just a little bit and then like not come back to it? Uh, and then leave that area alone and then I'm just gonna do this one and then like a little bit and then like I wanna stop and then it's gonna just remote. Like how serious am I gonna take sculpting my body and creating myself and my life? If I feel like approaching it that way, like in an artistic way, makes it fun. Like when I'm in the gym, I'm like, ooh yes, I'm really, I'm really arching that back. Like progress comes in hella forms. So it comes in the forms of what you're able to wear, it comes in how much sleep you're getting, it comes in how much you're able to lift the next time. Like, please do not only look at the scale and body recomposition, the scale it may not ever change, but my ass might look bigger, even though my weight never changed because I was losing the weight at the same time I was building the muscle. So the number didn't change, but my body did. So think of progress in other ways than the number. Um, BMI is racist and does not consider any kind of actual non-white people or people of diverse backgrounds and is therefore unimportant and is not how you should measure how fit you are. So ignore that shit. Or number, how much you weigh is purely how much your body weighs in relation to earth and nothing, nothing else, no other value. It will go down slowly as you're doing body recomposition because you're focusing more on shaping than you are on just shedding. Another tip is to get cute. Get your matching sets. Buy the cute fitness clothes, girl, because it's gonna make a difference in how much you wanna go out and how much you wanna do this if you look good while you're doing it, I think. When you get cute, you feel cute. That's how it works for me, that's how I approach life. So if you need to put on some makeup, you need to put on some fancy clothes just to go lift, just to go on a walk, do that. Get in whatever mood and vibe you need to do to get this done. If that means you gotta get hot to do it, get hot to do it, bitch! Buy the clothes! Sorry y'all, my camera died right as I was wrapping up filming, but those are all of my tips essentially. Those are my advice. I feel like making sure you have your activity fitness things very much so in order. 
having your food and nutrition very much so in order and then having your mindset in order are the main things you need to focus on to accomplish your goals of body transformation. I have seen the most progress ever since I started really focusing in on these areas. Well, yeah, y'all, I really hope y'all found this video helpful and encouraging and informative. I have been having so much fun finding confidence in myself and learning what it's like to trust myself and what commitment really means and just doing so much building a relationship with myself through this fitness journey and I'm so excited to keep going and getting finer and finer by the day and I really just want to encourage all of the baddies out there especially the ones who also those of you who also have PCOS who've been trying forever to lose weight and it feels like something's not working something's wrong with you whatever whatever I want you to know that like that is not true like you are doing everything that you know to do and what it's all about is figuring out what works best for your specific body and that takes time and that's all that you really need and I just want you to be gracious with yourself and patient with yourself and as you figure out what you need and then give those things to yourself as you can and I promise I promise you'll get where you need to be but I really want you to take away that there are some things in our control that we can change to make ourselves as happy as possible and one day at a time we will get there and as long as you do that you will succeed that's what i plan on doing and if you want to join me feel free to you know subscribe to my channel and check out some more of my videos i create fitness content i create lifestyle and fashion content and productivity content so if you're all about getting shit done getting fine having fun being yourself then this is the place to be i plan on continuing to sculpt my body because i want to be hot forever and if you want to see how that goes i would also tune in for more so if you have any questions leave them in the comments below and i will see y'all in my next video bye friends